Good morning. Denise Dryden here. I'm out on Bainbridge Island doing my weekly video. And right now in June 2019, we're still experiencing a lot of internal and external instabilities. Whether it's what's going on outside, politically, socially, we've talked about this before, or what's going on internally. So last week I went into the external stuff and today I want to go through the internal influences that you might be feeling. And I want to start with this, with this image or this story that um, whenever I would get information, sort of drop in, it would always come through 20th century uh, media, whether it was movies, commercials, anything. And there's this movie from 1984 by Steve, with Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin called Back in Bowl. Um, excuse me, that's hilarious, called All of Me, All of Me. And it's where Back in Bold comes from. Sorry, I got it crisscrossed. Um, so I'm dating myself. We're talking 1984, early, you know, mid Steve Martin's career. And he and Lily Tomlin are pretty funny together. So if you have an opportunity to rent it, it would be really good. Basically, it's the story about a very... Um, a prideful millionaire who has figured out how to bring a shaman in and switch souls so her soul can jump from an old body to a young body and of course only in the Steve Martin fashion is the bowl and the soul mixed up several times and so there's this theme throughout the whole move the whole movie which is back in bowl get back in the bowl <laughs> so I wanted to start with that and say that we are learning to pay attention to energetic things like energetic sensitivities and in we're learning that this is a whole nother way of being so as we have awareness and you've seen you know the beginning of highly sensitive empathic um, um, information what does it mean to be an empath what does it mean to be energetically sensitive this is all sort of coming to the mainstream we're seeing it in movies we're seeing it in commercials we're seeing it in everything so a highly sensitive person is someone who has the ability to react. Um, it means that their neurons are reacting at a much higher level of input, um, both in environment and in senses and in their emotions, right? So someone who's an empath is someone who feels emotions and reacts on an intuitive level to what those emotions are. Those of us, and I'm just going to quote for the bigger banner piece of energetically sensitive, is a broader perspective. So it's awareness that everything is energy, and when energy comes and affects us, it affects our bodies and we react to it. So this, is, this, this, is, this focus is aimed at the energetically sensitive. So um, I sort of present things in these weekly videos and break them down verbally so that they make sense to you. I provide a context, a historical context, I use words, and I tell a story and I build some tools. What I'm also doing when I'm doing these videos is I'm holding that vibration so you may be able to feel something when I'm talking. And then I'm doing an energetic alignment with that material. So there's multiple levels of how this information is passed on. So pay attention today um, as you're listening, sort of listening with what parts of your body and how you're feeling as I'm talking about this, okay? So to start with, when we are energetically sensitive, um, we react to everything around us, right? And if we understand this, we can slow, slow things down and sort of go, okay, now I see this coming. I've been building some awareness of how to slow down over the last few weeks. If we're not aware of the invisible reactors, we can tip into overwhelm. Even when we're aware, we can tip into overwhelm. But if we're not aware, it sort of comes out of nowhere and next thing you know, we're sort of wobbling. So we have different ways of reacting. Some of us can feel that, that, that we've missed something, or we've made a mistake, or we, or, or we start doubting or second-guessing ourselves, like, I don't understand, how did that happen? Some of us will hunker down and go like, this doesn't feel good, so the only thing I know how to do is do. So I'm gonna try to control it, and I'm gonna jump in and move and push and force and press things so that they don't, I can't feel what's going on on the outside. Some of us can feel this and will feel buried, hopeless, unable to move, like, I don't know what's going on, but I just, I can't do it. It's, it's too hard. And, and it's like, just check out. The, another group is some of us will feel this and we'll go internal and we'll isolate or we'll hide. Like, I'm going to just hunker down here and wait for it to go away. 
So we're gonna use sleep or screens or weed or you know anything to keep us sort of isolated and away from what's going on out there because it's really hard. I think we're gonna see a lot of our kids over this summer vacation thinking that I just, uh, school was hard. School was harder than I thought it was and I'm gonna need to spend the whole summer sitting in my room doing nothing to integrate and get back to myself. And what I'm noticing is that isn't, that that's one tool, but there are so many more that we could use. So when something is felt or perceives, we feel impacted by this. And when we feel impacted, there are three ways that we deal with it. We either ignore it, cover up, um, cover it up, compartmentalize, you know, like, nope, uh-uh, not dealing with this. Or two, we try to control it. We hold a tighter grip. We, 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 we try to um, make sure that it doesn't go any place where we don't need it to go. Or a third one is that we fall apart. We shatter. And I want to talk today about this shattering. What happens when you shatter? So the image or the sound that I would like you to sort of conjure up is imagine taking a bag of M&Ms or Skittles or marbles or, you know, dried pasta <laughs> and dropping it on a kitchen tile floor. It's like ping, 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 ping. And then it just literally has a mind of its own and it scatters out. So when we fall apart and when we shatter, it's like whoosh, and then it just spreads out around us. And when we fall apart, we get flustered. We lose our train of thought. We panic like, oh, oh no, it's all over the place. We get overwhelmed and we don't know where to start. So imagine that you have just like, I, I can't hold this anymore. I've just shattered all over the floor and I'm panicked and people are looking and I don't know what to do. And we're a mess and we're all over the place. And when something like that happens, pressure doesn't make it easier. Hurry up. Why don't you pick these up? Let me help you. You know, um, pressure, pressure, pressure doesn't help. There's panic, there's pain. And, and, and there's this sort of ongoing pace to get it together, get it together. Um, I've worked with several families and there's usually one spouse in a couple that shatters. And there's one spouse in a couple that tries to control. And then they have children that either shatter or control or isolate. And so this has been a pattern that I've been watching for the last five years. So when they're shattering, there's shame. Like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know how to do this. I, I, I lost control. There's lost sort of overwhelm and, and, and there's no control. There's an urgency to recover, to recover like, oh, I gotta do this fast. I gotta make sure that no one sees this. I gotta show everybody that I know what I'm doing even though I don't know why this happened. And external, there's external pressure and expectations. And they all sort of keep promoting the falling apart. So what this might look like is that if you're a seventh grader coming home after school and you're sort of numb from all of the activity or the bullying or the, um, the learning challenges or just the pace at school, the noise, you might come home and your backpack is full of half written notes. You don't really understand all the homework assignments. You didn't know what books you were supposed to get. You sort of are just lost and you keep just shrinking when someone asks you, do you know what to do? Do you have time for your homework? How come you didn't bring this? And it's just like imploding smaller and smaller. This also might look like, you know, you, you're in charge of making the meal that night and you get behind and then you try to rush and then you're flustered. And you know, we know what happens in a kitchen when you're flustered, you drop things, you um, cut yourself, you burn yourself, you burn food and you make a mess and, you, and you're not really um, able to bring it all together. Or when you're at work, and, and I work specifically with a couple of teachers, and they said, you know, what we do is we, we make sure we have a presentation on the outside that we look organized and we're ready. Yet, you know, what they don't know is how far behind I am in lesson plans or in grading or take this into the office. No one knows what a mess my internal mechanisms and systems for getting there are because I hide them. So this is called shattering. So some of us go in and out of shattering and some of us maintain this on a, on a constant level. We're sort of always trying to pick up the pieces. So we are overwhelmed, we're lost, we're feeling judged, 
and there's just too much coming at us and not enough internal tools to know what to do. So for me, and the reason I, for me and the reason I picked this, this um, subject is that I always use the back and bowl. Once the pieces shatter and I realize, ah, they've, they've shattered. I conjure up this guru who sort of has this broken English and he says back in bowl because he doesn't know how to speak anything else, but you know, everything needs to get back into this bowl. And I say to myself, Denise, back in bowl. Let's get back in there and start reintegrating. And, and the most important thing is that when we do this, we have to do this with intention, which is, oh, there's pieces all over the place. I need to pick them up. Compassion, which is, oh, wow, they're all over the place. And you do it with kindness and softness, you know, and space. Like, okay, so it's clear for about five minutes and let's bring it all together, 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, and give some deep, comfortable breathing and integrate it. And the request, which is, hey, let's start spinning all this and bring it back into the bowl. So you're really saying, let's recollect. Let's recollect my pieces. Like it's a very natural thing to do. Like, oh, okay, it's just out there. Let's bring it back together. Kind of like the way a kitchen's a mess after you cook kind of like you know you you work on any project and all your tools are out there and you have to bring them back together or you know put it into any context kind of like what a room looks like after a toddler has been in it you just put it back together when they're done so the other image that because I'm because I'm seem to be stuck in 1984 movies right now um, or was it 80 I think it was 85 um, Terminator 2 where the, the, the bad guy, T-1000, was this stern-looking, morphy cop guy. And every time they blew him up, burned him, crashed his car, whatever, they'd be like, yes, he's gone. And then you'd sort of see, you know, these pieces, of blah, 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 and it would come back up and come back into form. And then he'd be right there again, ready to start all over. And they'd go, oh, here we go again. So what we know about the Terminator film is that it's called back in form which is, so it's either back in bowl or back in form. So I either go get a bowl and start putting myself back together, or I just put my hands out and I go back in form, bring it back in, take a deep breath and bring it back in. And again, do it with kindness, do it with wisdom. So back in form is just the other way that I've been able to do this. So the most important part of the message today is that we all shatter and we all need to reform. It's the way that we adjust to changes. It's the way that we deal with incoming and outgoing messages and information. It's our body just sort of goes Psh, and then it comes back together. It's harder when there's pressure and judgment. It's easier when there's understanding and compassion. And there's mastery when we learn to just sort of like back and form. Denise, get back and form. And it's a lot easier when we approach it with playfulness. So my name's Denise Dryden. This is what I do. If you're interested in, in looking at modules or coaching on how to really address this shattering, let me know. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.